All right. Anyway, we got a first question today is from Devin, and Devin says, I've recently made the leap from Windows to Mac. Kudos. Yay. Uh, and have since realized that I have no viruses on my computer. <laughs> I have no idea about a few things, mostly uh, since I do a lot of video editing and I download tons of shows from Miro, deleting them, downloading more, etc. Miro's a good player to catch a lot of internet TV shows, yeah. by the way. You can get us from there. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to know how to do defrag my hard drive. Also, as far as uninstalling, what is the best way to uninstall an application or program? Well, the first part here, uh, defragging your hard drive. If you need to defrag, this is the best tool that I recommend. It's uh, a little box. Tech, tech Tools. Tech Tool, yeah. Tech Tool mm -hmm. Pro. And uh, that's a little CD for it. And this is a great tool because it can do a lot of maintenance things for your computer. It can check certain people pieces of hardware like your RAM, make sure everything's okay, so help diagnose problems. Uh, it's a nice thing to have. Uh, you don't have to install it on the computer. You can just boot from the disk and then run those utilities. That's the best way to run it anyway. There's also a version that comes on a USB flash drive, so it boots onto there. Um, so that's, that's pretty nice. It can defragment your hard drive, optimize it so your files are in the best place. It does a lot better job than, say, what you're used to with Windows, the default defragmenting tool that's in there. Yeah. Mac does not come with a built-in defragmenting tool. It, it doesn't. It doesn't need it as much, I wouldn't think. It, it does, yeah. It does. It's nice to have. Mm -hmm. It does a pretty good job on that. So that would be a tool I'd recommend. Uh, there's some other tools out there. That's the one I like. For other things you might want to use to diagnose a computer problems, Disk Warrior is one of those tools mm -hmm. as well. Um, so anyway, how to uninstall a program? Most of the time, a CD, DVD, or a, D, a disk image file, like a .dmg file that you Just downloaded download, off the yeah. internet to install a program with, Often you'll see another program that's an installer or an uninstaller. Mm -hmm. And you can use that to uninstall the program and it'll get rid of the application file as well as all the related resource files that it installed on your hard drive. So like for, for instance, on this computer, if I wanted to trash a program and I go to the applications folder and I wanted to trash something like uh, Photo Booth, I could just send that directly to the trash can. Oh, no. and get rid of it. And then it's going to ask me to authenticate. I'm going to click cancel because I don't really want to trash that. Uh, but some things like parallels to run Windows, zoom in so you can see that a little better. You know, you look inside there and there's a folder and these are a bunch of files that are in there, the set of files in the parallels folder. There's the actual parallels um, application. And these are some other resource guides, you know, how-tos, PDF files, instructions, the Parallels Explorer program, which is a separate application. Now, I could just take that and trash it and it'd be gone, but that doesn't really get rid of everything. And nope. that's why you have to actually go in and kind of trash some of the things yourself manually. And that's, we covered a video a ways back, I think, on safe files that are safe to trash on your Mac. And this is a way you can actually get rid of them. There's a couple of places they stick things on the Mac. Most of the time, it's inside the library folder. And it's usually a couple of library folders. One library folder that's a master library folder for the whole system, and that's on your hard drive. Hard drive? Uh, library. Right there, library. Yeah. And you double click on it, and there's a bunch of files in there that are resources, application support for Adobe, Final Cut Studio. If I was getting rid of Final Cut on this hard drive, then I might want to trash these two sets mm -hmm. of files. Um, oftentimes they don't take up much room. Like if I was to take this Final Cut Pro system support, and I was to do a get info on it, it tells me it's 126 megabytes, a fair amount. If I go to this on uh, iDVD, you'll find that one takes a bit more, 1.69 <laughs> gigabyte. All those little templates for iDVD. They're like little video clips. Almost. Those are still eating up your hard drive mm -hmm. when you just, if you just trash the application. Now, one other place it puts things is inside the student, you know, your home directory. I have students, what I've set up right now. But um, this would be your user's directory, whatever user. Yeah, you whatever have. you called your user, it might be, you know, so you look into that home directory, and you'll find another library file in there. And you double click on that, and you find things in there. And sometimes they're in a thing called application support, if you can see that. And if you open that up, you see a lot of applications have special support in there, resource files that it puts in there that's set up for this specific user, which means if I trash it, it's not going to hurt someone else's user, but it's taken up a, a lot of space just duplicating all of that. Now again, some of these files are really small. If I was to take this one, Zoom over a little bit. 1.8 megabytes. It's not really worth deal worrying about. And if I come back over here, some of them may take up a lot more space. So anyway, that's where you can find some of those resources. Another place you might want to take a look at is in the library is actually certain files. Like inside the preferences file, we mentioned that before. But and one also of these in each of the user and the main. 
That's right. So the preferences in here, there's a lot of stuff in there again that you might be able to trash, like Adobe Go Live preferences. I could just trash that because I don't even use Go Live anymore. No. In fact, it's not even. I don't think Adobe's. It wasn't included wasn't with the recent version of CS3. So. I think it's dead. So that's just taken up, you know, I don't know, probably kilobytes of data, not very much. But it's still there. Mm -hmm. Now, funny, kilobytes is now small. <laughs> that's kind of amazing. But another area is right here I want to talk, point out to you is if you run Parallels, for instance, that's the software that you can use to run Windows, it actually stores any disk images mm -hmm. for like the Windows XP in that folder. Which and if, if I installed software or anything on that could get pretty heavy. Right. And here's my Windows XP disk image. If I come over here, and let me zoom out a little bit here. Pull this window over. He wants us to go. And there's the size on that. If I open this up. Got nothing. There. There it Nine is. Almost point, 10 gig. Yeah. Wow. That's for that. Uh, you run, for those of you running a MacBook or a MacBook Pro, yeah. that's a huge chunk of your space. Yeah, so you say, well, I got rid of Parallels, but it still didn't, didn't free up much space. That's because it's actually stored in that location. So it's a little confusing how to uninstall. Now, Windows does come in their control panel with an uninstall, remove, add, remove programs uh, utility, uh, which gets some things. It doesn't get other things. I can't seem to remove Internet Explorer with it for some reason. <laughs> Me and uh, several other judges uh, who were in the antitrust suit. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it doesn't always work well, so it's kind of good to look for different ones. If you see an uninstaller with the original disk image that you've got, use that because that'll go through and find all those things for you. But you can do a search sometimes too to find the files. Use a little spotlight search, and you can just search for Final Cut Pro, and you can choose the location when you do a search. Instead of the whole Mac, you could say, I want to just choose in this image, and there you go. There we I have two, yeah. two XML files right there. Although here, it's only showing a Final Cut Pro because it's a Final Cut Pro XML file, mm -hmm. and it may not, in fact, be a Final Cut Pro XML file. That's true. Uh, so. Neat little tip, though, since we're talking about Final Cut Pro and the preferences, is mm -hmm. a lot of times you might have a time where a program on your Mac gets hung up or... Um, It'll just open and instantly crash. Happens oh, a lot with fi uh, yeah. you know, Photoshop or, like yeah. we're saying, Final Cut Pro. Since we're a lab, so many people come in, plug their drives up, and it changes the yeah. settings. Yeah, the computer lab I work at at Ohio University, my regular full-time job, unlike this free things, community service thing I do, uh, we had Final Cut Pro launch, and it would suddenly crash. It would just quit unexpectedly in the startup process mm -hmm. of Final Cut Pro. We couldn't figure out why, so I logged in as a different user, wasn't able to duplicate the problem, it launched just fine. That told me it must be in the preference settings for that user, so I knew to look in that library folder for that home directory for that user. Went in there, trashed the Final Cut Pro preferences files, the user preferences, and then it worked just fine. And you're not actually deleting anything about the program except for your user preferences mm -hmm. that you've gone through and changed that could have conflicted with each other. And most of those can be recreated when the program launches the, the next launch, time. it'll pop up like it's the first time you've opened but it. But if it launches and tries to read that file and it can't, it's going to get freaked out and quit out. It's going to abort and it may not even give you an error message. Mm -hmm. Uh, which brings us to an issue. It's not a matter of when, it, it, matter, matter of if your hard drive fails, it's a matter of when your hard drive fails. And, so, and hard drive failure doesn't mean it's the whole hard drive, it means a certain file. You know, instead of my preference file getting corrupted, it could have been something else that got corrupted. Mm -hmm. That important Microsoft Word document I was working on or video editing project. It's really important to try to run, you know, maintenance type of programs on your hard drive so it can block out bad sectors. That's a good thing to do. There's also a first aid thing in disk utility, which can be really mm -hmm. valuable to you as well. Um, on a Mac, Back up your the data. Virus person to receive a virus. <laughs> you'd be like patient zero. You get it named after you. And <laughs> it's uh, it's um. Back up your data. The hard drives are really cheap right now. Go out there, buy you know another hard drive if you can. One of the questions. Speaking of external.